Hi everyone, Bernard here. I hope you're all staying safe and well and welcome to the Citizen Channel. And today we're going to do another episode. This is episode three. This is the third one I've done in order. Whether they go out in order, they may change, but they probably will. Uh, episode three of the streets around Main Road. So that's it. We're going to look at that today. In 1977, the Manchester City Council, very clever people in those days, or perhaps not so much these days, but uh, named a number of streets in a new estate uh, in Moss Side, after famous city players, and of course, we've already looked at legends Fred Tilson and Billy Meredith, who were the first two to have the streets, or not the first two to have the streets named after them because they're all done at the same time. But the first two we looked at. But today, we're going to have a look at a gentleman called uh, there on the image there, a gentleman called Tommy Johnson. Please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. All these city past vlogs are coming out. Do city presents, city quizzes, city book clubs, you name it, we do it. And then also some film and TV stuff as well. If you want a break from football, please check out my film and TV reviews and information vlogs, etc. And please, if you look at the screen now, there's links for Facebook and Twitter. I post loads of stuff on there as well. So if you follow for me on there, I do check every couple of days and follow and friend everyone back and please check out if you get a chance my little website moviegamenostalgia.com for rare dvds movie posters and some the odd board games there will be some city stuff going on there at some stage as well but uh, that's in the early early stages of doing that at the moment it's a matter of finding the time isn't it it's very very busy anyway uh please if you can't leave us a comment today on on, on this gentleman tommy johnson uh, there's not many people around who, who would have watched him to be honest with you not in the time scale we're looking at but uh, you may know a little bit about him from from uh, your granddads or your dads etc etc just uh, leave me a comment of, of what, any thoughts you've got and of course if you can't, don't have time to give a comment today just give us a thumbs up it's always nice it's nice to get views but it's lovely to get a thumbs up as well try and get at least about 20 for these city play, city vlogs so please if you can do that for me that's uh, gives me a nice warm feeling thanks very much right here we go yeah it's called tommy johnson walk yeah postcode m14 for J.A. Tommy Johnson Walk and yes Tommy Johnson Thomas Clark Fisher Johnson to give him his full title obviously for the sake, sake of this uh, vlog I'll call him Tommy or he was actually called Tosh as well although that's not something uh, as, as overly known as, as Tommy Born the 19th of August 1901, so just at the turn of a new century into a new century, in Dalton in Furness, so which uh, is on Furness, so it's got to be up near Barrow, hasn't it, up, up in that neck of the woods. Uh, as a kid, I think, and growing up, his preferred sport was rugby. Uh, but he did, uh, as, as a, like most kids, I mean, I played football, rugby, cricket, you name it. I had a go at everything. The only thing I wasn't very good at was swimming. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, like like any young lad from the 1901 or whether it's 1959 or 2009, it doesn't matter, does it? Well, like many young lads, uh, we try different things. And although he did, did prefer rugby, he also turned out for his local team, called Dalton Casuals uh, and his appearances for them did bring sort of uh, rave reviews his day job I mean obviously his apprenticeship and what he served before obviously he didn't get much time for a day job he was picked up uh, quite early in life his day job was an apprentice as a riveter in one of the many barrel shipyards yeah I went up to barrel many years ago uh, to watch uh, I was going up to watch rangers with the with the Barrow uh, Rangers uh, Supporters Club. So I spent a night in Barrow, quite interesting place uh, place to visit, not a place your holiday, obviously, but uh, yeah, I had a, a good evening there, good in the evening in the, in the couple of working men's clubs up in Barrow. Uh, yeah, so he was in the Barrow ship, shipyards and city man, manager Magnol was pointed in his direction at the time uh, and got advice from the city left back Eli Fletcher, who was that desperate for this guy to come to city, actually threatened to quit city if he didn't sign this uh, Tommy Johnson. So obviously Magnol went up there and convinced him uh, to come to city and he joined obviously in early 1999. Uh, 1999, 1919, my apologies, yeah, I'm going ahead of myself there. Of course, he scored in his City debut, he was a prolific scorer, this guy. We're going to learn a bit more about him now, and uh, his City debut was at Main Road. Of course, he wasn't the official First Division or Second Division, because obviously it was just the season after the war, so it was still sort of into uh, into areas, northwest and all this sort of thing. Uh, and a couple of weeks later, he scored in his debut, and a couple of weeks later, 
he definitely won over the City faithful uh, by uh, scoring a hat-trick against Port Vale as still only a teenager, don't forget. Uh, and he would also play a number 9 or a number 10 role because he had a cracking left foot. So obviously if you look at, if you know the old number systems, number 10s, you think of Neil Young, what was his best le his best foot? Was his left foot, of course. And number 10 were always your inside left. So he had a great inside uh, left foot as well. Uh, yeah, as a forward, I mean, obviously people at the time he just had that little knack, that little ability to find space and uh, turn those half chances into goals. A bit like peak Sergio Aguero and he was likened or say if someone of 40 years ago might have likened him to Jimmy Greaves, someone like that. Within weeks, I mean, there's an image there. He was actually uh, played at Hyde Road uh, against, uh, and was introduced to King King George V. That was his first time he'd ventured out of the out of London to a, a provincial game, a City versus Liverpool game at Hyde Road. That so obviously things were going quite well for uh, for Tommy. And of course, he would go on to play, although he had, a, say, a season, a season a bit where he wasn't a regular. He would, obviously, by the time we moved to the new main road in 1923, he, of course, become some a sort of regular in the team by then. And, of course, he played in that first game at main road in 1923. And, yes, he scored the winner. Yeah, I mean, you see, dropping up a lot of a lot of goals this gentleman scored. He scored the winner in a 2-1 win over Sheffield United. In January 1926, just to endear him more to City fans, if he wasn't already, I mean, he'd already become a bit of a hero, even from his uh, first knockings for City. He scored, of course, one of City's six goals at Old Trafford. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? January 1926, he scored one of City's six goals in the very first 6-1 at their place. The very first, the very first. Obviously, we can think of a legendary one quite recently, but this was the very first one in January 1926. Uh, although that season, it didn't turn out too well. Not, not like uh, recently. Not like uh, obviously the recent six one, uh, we did actually get brilliant uh, relegated. So he's sort of brilliant. Sadly, didn't didn't help City much, and we also got to an FA Cup final that season, nineteen twenty six. And sadly, again, despite having the the wonderful goal scorer Tommy Johnson in the team. We actually lost that FA Cup final as well. So not only were we relegated, but we actually lost the FA Cup final in twenty six. Uh, and obviously, of course, he was an integral part of the teams, but he couldn't he couldn't prevent that. But then back in twenty seven, twenty eight, he was obviously there again, helping knocking the goals in to help us get uh, promotion back into the first division. And one of his recognised as one of his greatest games for City was at uh, Goodison Park on the 15th of September 1928, which was to have ramifications and lead to a typical City element this game, because uh, obviously newly promoted City at the time travelled to Everton, the reigning champions, of course, of the first division in that season, uh, obviously this 28-29 season. And there was lots of trouble. City got there late. The the trains, although all the train only left uh, Manchester, it was the old GMEX. It was old Central Station that used to go over to Merseyside. So, despite that leaving about five minutes late, I mean, City ended up being about half an hour late. And they'd always planned. I mean, these games, it wasn't. They weren't there hours before kick off. You're always, you're always there, say an hour before kick off or something like that. But there's lots of trouble on the train that got delayed, and then it ended up that they had to jump in taxis when they got to to Liverpool to get to the Everton ground. I mean, we're at Actually, City were actually fine. I think they were nine minutes late kicking off there, unfortunately, in this game. So it didn't start too well. In fact, we went a goal behind. I think some of the players were still tying the boots on the pitch at the time. They literally had no time to warm up. They just had to get on the, out on the pitch and start playing. Uh, so we actually went 1-0 down. But uh, Tommy Johnson had managed an equaliser just before half-time. And in the second half, a crowd of 47,871, including many thousands of City fans, apparently, who had got in the ground on time. They, they hadn't been delayed. Uh, were treated to uh, a sort of masterous, masterful game from Johnson, who was very Virtually unplayable that day as he scored five goals. Obviously, he added another four to that one he scored in the first half. As he scored five goals in a 6 2 win. And even the great Dixie Dean of Everton, the, the fantastic legend himself, uh, sang his praises. And uh, yeah, this is where it was going to uh, rebound on City a little bit by the end of the following season. But uh, yeah, in that 1928 29 season, obviously helped by those five goals in that one game, he scored an amazing 38 goals in 39 first division games so that that was up there with the likes of uh, Dixie Dean not think Dixie Dean had made 400 appearances for Everton and scored 350 goals that's not bad going is it i mean he'd also scored um, Tommy Johnson also scored in 1926 27 he scored 30 he scored 
scored 25 goals in 38 games. That was quite good. 27-28, he scored 19 goals in 35, 35 games. And City had quite a good forward line at the time as well. So he was, was sort of... a I'm always having to fight for his place to get into the, into that. But yeah, the next season, seemingly out of nowhere, on March the 1st, 1930, he actually played his last game for City. He didn't know it at the time. Uh, and of course, he scored in a 4-1 in a win at Main Road against Liverpool. And shortly after, uh, within a few days, he found himself transferred to Yes. Well, there we go. Well, obviously, they knew, they knew him from the last season before, didn't they? With that uh, trouncing with Gibbon. But he was transferred to Everton uh, on the 5th of March for an estimated £6,000. Of course, Dixie D must have had a word with the old guys there to get him the old uh, men in suits, if you like, to, to actually get him over to Goodison. City fans were devastated. There's no one underestimating that at the time. And there was absolute uproar with the City fans. Uh, the gates actually slumped. There was actually a significant drop in the average crowds at uh, Main Road by about 7,000 fans as a result of this. We were voting with defeat, with defeat for uh, for what had happened and, and the fact Tommy Johnson had been transferred. I mean, City don't, that, at that time, City's, trans, City's crowds had been the, the highest in the league uh, for the last two seasons, the previous two seasons. Seasons, it actually uh, got more the average crowds were higher than anybody else's in, in English football, uh, and obviously the season after or the season after this happened, obviously slumped down to fifth, fifth in the division. Obviously feeling the effect of the fans who just just had had enough, and they just basically thought, right, with Tommy Johnson, the way they treat Tommy Johnson, we're not going back to watch him. So it it had that sort of effect. Of course, City shooting themselves in the foot yet again. Surely not. Surely that doesn't happen often. Does it? Typical. Well, they, we know the typical City, don't we? I mean, Tommy Johnson himself was totally shocked by the movie. He lived in Gorton at the time and he did actually return there in his final years. But uh, yeah, he, he made the most of it. It's philosophical um, and obviously the knowledge that he would be playing alongside Dixie Dean certainly softened the blow a little bit. But there's no way he actually wanted to leave City. He was absolutely devastated by that. I mean, the justification from City, the men in suits, the guys on the border uh, was at, uh, at 30 which wasn't old in those days for players, to be honest with you. Uh, City claimed his best years were behind him. He'd actually played 11, 30 games that season and only scored 11. Absolute disgraceful. So that was probably uh, why they made that assumption that his best time was behind him. But uh, again, that's not, not as prolific, perhaps, 11 out of 30, but it's not, not that bad, was it? It was still pretty good. Uh, but oddly enough, it was no surprise in his... Four-year spell at Goodison, then he actually went on to play for Liverpool as well. But his four-year spell at Goodison coincided with one of their most successful periods until then. At the time, uh, he picked up another second division uh, title medal, which he'd done with City as well, uh, and a league championship medal. And added to that, yes, he picked up an FA Cup winners' medal instead of a losers' medal this time. And yes, it was in a game against Manchester City in the final in 1933. So again, once again, these things come back to sting us in the bum, don't they? Uh, Years later, typical city, uh, but at least he didn't score, so he didn't he didn't add insult to injury in that game. But uh, he was part of the Everton team that uh, defeated City in the FA Cup final. All right, we went back the following year, but uh, that's by the by. Yeah, I mean, after football, he spent his time uh, in and around Manchester. He ran a couple of pubs. He, I think he owned a pub as well. Uh, he did a, a clerical job in his later years. And he and his son were keen City fans still. He would go and watch City regularly in the Mercer Allison years, for instance, and his son would go with him. And I think his son, uh, from from what I know, was a very keen City City fan as well. And they would go to to a lot of the games in that in the late sixties, early seventies. So his career spanned for City. Yeah, it's nearly ten years, nineteen nineteen to nineteen twenty nine. He made appearances. He made three hundred and fifty four appearances, scoring one hundred and sixty six goals. Depending who you look at, I mean, that's the, the stats in the City book. I mean, there are I've seen slightly different stats to that, but they're, they're never one hundred percent these these stats from all that long time ago. He actually made five appearances for England as well. I think he made two while he was at City. He made another three while he was at Everton, uh, scoring five goals. So again, not not too shabby, was it? He sadly passed away on January the 28th, 1973. Obviously, he lived, as I said, he lived his final years in Gorton, Gorton in Manchester Place. I lived myself for a, quite a long time. Uh, he passed away on the 28th of January, 1973, in Monsell Hospital. And in 2004, yeah, City honoured him by inaugurating, inaugurating him into the City Hall of Fame. Well, there you go, Tommy. Tommy Johnson, Tosh, Tommy. 
I'm not going to give his posh name. He didn't ever use that. He, he wouldn't like. I don't like my posh name. That's why I'm Bird and not Charles. But uh, that's not my fault. That's my, that's my parents here. But uh, you know, they christened me Charles, but never called me Charles. I, I don't understand it to this day. But uh, there you go. Thanks for joining me for this look at the incredible, the legend, a true legend, a real legend, the great goal scorer Tommy Johnson, uh, a city legend and a football legend, in my opinion. Anyway, join me next time. We'll look at another. We'll look at look at look at another legend that was honoured by the Manchester City Council in the seventies. As we look around, another legend around the streets of Main Road. Anyway, thanks for watching. We're going to do the rest day. Have a great one. Look at yourselves. Look at your friends. Look at your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. To meet here again on the Citizen Channel or perhaps have a flit across. Have a look at my film and TV channel. Whatever it is, I only ask one thing of you: stay safe, Blues and football fans everywhere. Thanks for watching. Come on, City. Bye for now.